Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my show Camera Tuesday, episode number 3, where we're gonna take a look into interchangeable lenses. So, uh, in my last episode, I mentioned that the d reason DSLRs became so popular is because they had interchangeable lenses and which allowed them to become a right tool for the right job. Now, you must understand lens plays a very important role in that. So, you must understand lens is a sort of ecosystem. So, uh, your camera, let's say it's a Nikon or Canon, cannot accept a lens for each other. You cannot put a Canon lens in Nikon or a Nikon lens on a Canon. You can do that with adapters, but they are not very reliable. Uh, autofocus is, well, flat out unusable and uh, forget about vibration compensation so you have to understand all the lens system is a ecosystem sort of scenario where you have to understand it, you can't just uh, you know a mishmash product so you have to choose it very carefully second no two systems are alike like there are systems that are specifically designed for movie so, uh, movie shooting there are lenses that are designed for uh, portable cameras like this uh, field uh, Samsung interchangeable lens camera series where they are only aiming for uh, portable market so no two system is alike and you must understand this please choose your lenses before you buy a camera now uh, how can you uh, do that very effectively very simple know uh, what you want to do like let's say sports photography is big for you and like you know you really want to get into sports photography uh, check whether the camera manufacturer has the lens for it or not and that's a very good uh, indication please choose the lens first and then move on so uh, now we're gonna take a look into how to make that decision how to choose which lens system we have to buy so then the question becomes what to look for first you have to understand if a system lens system like canon uh, mount systems are old they are doing something right to be old like you cannot be old in this uh, day and age of competition you have to be doing something right so if you find a lens system that is going on for 50 years that is doing something good so nikon and canon they are uh, quite famous and popular and for good reasons they deliver what they promise and you also have to understand price variability and availability matters a lot so let's say you ended up with a system that satisfies uh, your need let's say panasonic but the lenses are more expensive and you are like uh, this lens i can't buy or can't afford you are back to square one that's why pay attention to price nobody has infinite budget so uh, price matters second is a variety of the lenses that are available in simplest sense do they have prime lenses do they have zoom lenses do they have uh, enough lens variety that it can fulfill all the niche that you could could in future uh, desire to buy like let's say do you want 70 to 200 f 2.8 lens does uh, fuji has that or not so before you jump into this please make sure uh, after you check the price please check whether there are enough lenses available or not now availability i am mentioning very specifically because you might find it's not available in your region so uh, like nikons have let's say 70 to 80 lenses in india i can barely buy 20 or 25 of them so availability is region based so please double check and uh, third party support is also quite crucial for your mount system so let's say there is enough third party interest that means uh, you're gonna have some lenses that uh, you know suit your need so few lenses that comes to mind zeiss tamron and sigma these three uh, are uh, there are others also undeniably so but these three are the big games specifically sigma and tamron so if you can buy lenses for uh, from these manufacturers for your mount uh, you are generally in good hands so one thing you have to ask yourself what is the use now the, i have divided this category for ease of understanding you have photography you have tv or documentary and then you have cinema so is there a difference in them yes most definitely there are now be mindful all three can do each other's job now the reason why i have uh, divided them because they are very well suited for the task like let's say look have a look into photography lens photography lens are generally designed for speed 
they are very quick uh, that's why if, uh, rotation of their lens elements are very little you only rotate them um, to 45 degree and it goes through all its uh, focus range it's designed to be very quick because uh, understand this as a photographer you you don't have the time to you know go back and forth you you want it to be quick like as little movement as possible and you want the get job done and uh, because of that they also remove the ability to zoom so the millimeter aspect of your lens cannot change electronically in most photography lenses so you have to twist the lens now in documentary or tv scenario you don't have that luxury your camera might be much bigger or heavier or even if it's not let's say you mounted it on a small camera can you afford the luxury to like you know you're going to twist it like uh, this lens that is 17 to 120 you, you're not going to twist it like let's say an event is happening you're not going to twist it keep twisting it until you reach it so you need quick fast actions so generally documentary and tv cameras come with uh, motorized zoom and uh, they have autofocus and uh, they try to be as as uh, quick as possible in every regard they don't uh, they have electronic control for almost everything now we come to the cream of the crop so to say cinema lenses uh, these lenses are uh, let's just say it costs more than your arm leg eye and everything it's these are the most expensive lens that you can buy the reason why cinema lenses are so expensive is has to do with the fact they are generally a part of a set you don't buy one cinema lens you have to buy a whole kit you can rent one or two lenses but generally they are sold in kits and they are color matched to each other so one lens will not change the color to uh, another lens in that set and everything in that lens is manual there is no autofocus there is no or motorized zoom almost every function of that lens is manual so it takes a lot of time but in a movie industry where you have a camera person dedicated to you know handling the camera this is a luxury that people can afford and this also increases the cost they know that rich people are buying it so they don't have intensive uh, incentive to make it cheap so we have to now look at types of lenses there are only two types for this uh, presentation prime lenses and zoom lenses so prime lenses have better transmission basically because they have less glass in it if let's say 100 watts of light uh, is coming in to the lens almost 95 watts will get uh, to your sensor but if you have a zoom lens even with the same f-stop like f2.8 you will have a scenario where 100 watts of light is there but only 80 watt is getting not 95 so that's why i am saying uh, prime lenses generally have better t-stop ratings Second, they have zero to no distortion. Now this depends on the manufacturer. If they are doing their job correctly, this will not have any distortion. Where you notice that the things look bulged out or you know pin cushioned and like it's it's pinching. So this sort of things are not an issue in prime lenses. They are generally cheap and they are also light. So with all this many benefit, you might wonder uh, why somebody would wanna buy zoom lenses. Very simple reason. They are convenient. You can't, let's say you go into a zoo, you can't go closer to a lion, you can't go closer to a bird or to, you know, take a photo. A zoom lens gives you convenient on every front where you can compose your scene more uh, comfortably, where you are like, okay, I think 200 millimeter is not cutting it. Let's, uh, you know, make it like 250, 200, something. You can, you have a lot of uh, leeway and freedom. So convenient is a very big and uh, important reason why these lenses are even made so now you have decided the lens now the, we have to look at the numbers don't worry i'm not going to bore you with a uh, lot of detail all you have to understand is millimeter describes the field of view how wide or narrow is your field of view how much you are looking at so higher the number lower the field of view the tighter basically you are focusing so 300 millimeter bear has 8 degree in a full frame sensor and if you have 24 millimeter that has 84 degrees so you are capturing much wider but if you want to like zoom in into something you want narrow field of view so all that's all you have to understand millimeter just describes how wide or narrow your field of view is then we come into f stops all you have to understand about the f stop is changes the depth uh, of your field of view now what that means in simplest term how much separation you will have between your focus and out of focus areas so if your depth of field is very 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 shallow 
then you will have a scenario where let's say I am in focus, everything behind me is out of focus. So that's the uh, purpose of f-stops. Bigger number is generally better. Uh, however, you do lose a bit of sharpness, so you can't go like you know f1.4 and expect uh, very sharp images. And there is one another thing uh, you have to pay attention to. It's not necessary, but it's good to know. Is t-stop is also there, which is below this number. So let's say you have lens of 1.4 the t-stop will be like let's say uh, 1.8 or 1.9 because no glass is 100% transparent they lose some light how much light they have lost is ca uh, calculated by transmission value that's why cinema lenses are always rated in transmission rather than aperture and uh, so these are the three main core factors of uh, lenses nothing fancy it's just millimeter aperture and t-stop and you can ignore t-stop Unless you are comparing two identical lenses, that's how you can tell the difference. Now, there are a lot of bells and whistles in this industry and uh, there are some very useful bells and whistles like image stabilization. Suffice to say, without it, uh, you're going to learn that photography is not for everyone. It requires a very steady hand and image stabilization makes our life much, much easier. Then we have fast and silent autofocus. Almost every camera nowadays have autofocus, but not everyone has nano USM, which is the best I have tested so far. And it's quiet, so I can use it in video. It's uh, very uh, fast, so I am, uh, you know, not uh, spending time to, you know, focus and all that. So silent and uh, fast autofocus is a key feature nowadays. And you can also have external features like, you know, tripod, foot and collar, basically this sort of attachment, which allows you to mount a, a very heavy lens to your tripod without unbalancing it. Uh, it's, a, it's a safety feature because if you mount it based on your camera body, the mount might break because the lenses are, telephoto lens specifically can be very heavy. I'm talking three to five kgs. So uh, generally tripod foot or collar is used. Foot simply does not allow you to rotate. Collar does allow you to rotate. So that's there and uh, weather sealing is also done nowadays in some lenses be mindful you need a camera that supports it if your camera is not weather sealed and you buy a weather sealed uh, lens it's no use so these are the some bells and whistles now we come up to the most dreaded part of photography the crop factor so in simplest sense get a full frame don't worry about it now let's say you can't afford full frame just remember one thing everybody tells you the millimeter rating of the lens which is almost all the time correct however where they screw over the customer is they say aperture number the f stop so to say without dividing it uh, oh, pardon me without multiplying it with the crop factor that's all you have to remember so let's say for instance my camera has f2.8 lens is it f2.8 no why because my sensor is APS-C so I'm getting effectively f4 lens so be mindful of this sort of thing. You buy a lens that says like, you know, f2.8 and it is a full frame lens. You mount it in a crop sensor, you're still getting f4. So this is the reason why uh, you don't see, you know, a sports photographer using cheap uh, lenses and all that. And specifically cheap uh, APS-C sensor or one type sensor because you must have noticed like nowadays you get a ludicrous range in you know small cameras then why are they are not using it simply because aperture is also getting multiplied so not only your shallow depth of field is gone the amount of light is directly proportional to the surface area so this surface area might not look that much different but you are talking about 30 to 50 percent loss and 80 percent loss when you go to this much area so suffice to say try if you can afford it please go for full frame or APS-C do not go down to one inch sensors. I have someone who did that and suffice to say it's not a good idea. Be mindful crop sensor please multiply that crop factor with your aperture also please. So thanks for watching I hope you liked it and learned something from it if you liked it please like if you didn't like please dislike leave a comment and subscribe and if you are free press the bell icon. I'll see you next Tuesday in the episode of Camera Tuesday. Bye.